Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about what happens when black holes fail to perform their duty. In other words, what's going to happen if black hole can't really black hole anymore? Although in this case we're talking about more of a galactic effect than local effect. So let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. Now just to clarify, we're not really talking about black holes suddenly losing the ability to attract objects or to, well in some sense, destroy them using their very very strong gravitational fields. We're also not really talking about black holes disappearing anywhere, we're going to be talking about much wider effects that certain supermassive black holes have on the galaxies they're located in or even on the nearby galaxies. So for example, if we were to find the supermassive black hole in the middle of our own galaxy, and it's somewhere right there in the middle, we would realize quite a lot of things that are different about this black hole. First of all, it's not very active, it's not really producing any major galactic emissions like so many other AGNs or active galactic nuclei out there. This of course can be compared to the famous Centaurus A galaxy that's the closest AGN to us. And here you can really see how many different emissions this galaxy has because the black hole in the middle is very active and is currently releasing a lot of different galactic winds. But today we know that these galactic winds released by these very massive black holes can be so powerful that they can completely turn off the formation of new stars not only in the galaxy where they are located, but even in nearby galaxies or the entire cluster. So let's try to visualize the effects we are talking about here. This is the Milky Way galaxy in the middle. The black hole itself is somewhere in the center, impossible to see in this picture. And here is what we refer to as the local group. The Milky Way galaxy, the Andromeda galaxy, the Triangulum galaxy, and all of the nearby smaller galaxies that orbit around these three major galaxies. And this distance here is about 3 million light years across. If we keep zooming out, we'll eventually discover even more clusters and even be able to connect all of them into one major supercluster known as Virgo which then connects into another one known as Laniakea. But the idea here is that all of these galactic clusters are all sort of connected to one another. And we know for a fact that some supermassive black holes are so extremely powerful that they can easily extinguish star formation in the nearby clusters as well. And so very recently the scientists studying this cluster right here known as Sparks 1049 realized quite the opposite. They saw what happens when the supermassive black hole stop being so active and suddenly shuts down its unusual emissions. In other words, it's a discovery of a black hole that stopped being active. It shut down and thus allowed the other galaxies to start forming stars again. But what's really interesting here is not only how fast these stars are forming, but also where they're forming. The observations here suggest star formation that's about 300 times faster than star formation in the Milky Way galaxy, with about 900 masses of the Sun being formed here every single year. And this is not actually in the middle of any galaxy. All of this seems to be happening in the middle of the cluster in between major galaxies. So if we were to use the analogy of the local group here, it's as if the Milky Way galaxy, for example, stop being an AGN, shut down its uh, active winds, and then somewhere in the middle here, a lot of stars started forming really really fast. With this type of a formation within about 100 million years, this region would form just as many stars as there are in the middle of the Milky Way galaxy, potentially even creating a completely new galaxy, assuming of course those stars can stay together. And this is a very interesting observation in showing us how a lot of these massive black holes literally serve as an on-off switch for the formation of star systems and of course planets in various galaxies out there. Now in terms of where this is located, it's actually pretty far from us. It's roughly around 9.9 .9 billion light years away, so this is a really really distant cluster. And this image right here, you can kind of see that the central galaxy with the black hole is right there and the major star formation is happening around 80,000 light years away from the black hole. And in some sense you can compare this to suddenly having stars form right between the Milky Way galaxy and the large Magellanic cloud that you see right here. So this distance right between them is about 80,000 light years. Now why it's forming in this unusual region and what exactly kickstarted it to be in there specifically is obviously a mystery. We don't really know how suddenly so much gas formed in this unusual intergalactic space. We also have no idea what it's going to become in the future, 
or if it's going to stop at some point when the black hole activates again. But from what we see so far is that because the black hole stopped being active and because there was so much gas in between these galaxies in the cluster, possibly because a lot of this gas got thrown out by the black hole itself, it eventually resulted in the massive formation of stars in the middle of empty space. And another major observation in this galactic cluster is in regards to different temperature observations across the different galaxies. In this paper, scientists realized that the region where the stars are formed is much, much cooler, much colder than the nearby regions where temperatures are millions of degrees. Just to give you a comparison, the scientists behind this paper mentioned that the temperature, the average temperature in this cluster is about 65 million degrees Kelvin, which I think is about 170 million degrees Fahrenheit. So these regions are really, really hot and all of this energized gas is most likely the result of the extremely active galactic nuclei that was there in the past. However, the regions near this star formation are about seven times cooler and the regions where the stars are forming are probably even colder. It's so cold as a matter of fact that the scientists couldn't really identify it. And so the presence of this cooler gas in these vast regions of space allows the gas to come closer together, to clump into larger and larger pieces, and to obviously start producing stars and most likely planets as well. However, in the past we've also discovered quite the opposite. As a matter of fact, one of the previous videos that was about so-called quasar tsunamis discussed how a typical AGN, a typical active galactic nuclei, if it's powerful enough, can completely shut off everything in the galaxy, possibly even destroying it eventually. These galactic winds can be extremely fast and very, very powerful. Some of them can move materials at roughly around 10 to even 20% of the speed of light. And after the galactic nuclei has stopped being active, only a remnant shell of the galaxy is left. And so in this particular case, we seem to be observing quite the opposite. The black hole shut down, and so now these stars can form quite actively in the region where it wasn't possible before. But it's also important to understand that right now this is sort of the only explanation we have. In other words, we are only assuming that this is what happened because we're not seeing the black hole emissions. The assumption of course being that the supermassive black hole is somewhere in the region that's kind of right here. But because we're not seeing the emissions, we kind of assume that, well, this is probably what happened. Although obviously other explanations are possible as well. But if this is what happened, the question is then what exactly happened to this black hole for it to suddenly shut down? Well, the only major explanation the scientists have right now is related to the galactic collision. They think that maybe the central galaxy collided with a slightly smaller galaxy, and as a result of all of this, the gas that was being fed into the supermassive black hole now suddenly got kicked out and was no longer feeding the supermassive black hole. Starved of all of this matter, the supermassive black hole just stopped emitting, and all of this other gas escaped into the intergalactic space. Eventually, with time, some of this gas most likely started to kind of coalesce and come closer and closer, and started to produce its own stars. At least, that's the explanation for now, until we get more observations or more explanations from other studies. But if this is correct, then this observation also allows us to understand how certain intergalactic stars are formed. For example, we know that there are quite a lot of stars located between the Milky Way and the Andromeda Galaxy, and there are even stars located between the Milky Way and its partners, Large and Small Magellanic Cloud. We've previously found quite a lot of these stars in the vicinity, but we didn't really know how they were formed. And although some of them could be obviously kicked out from, for example, galactic collisions or through the interaction with galaxies via the so-called galactic tides, in this case, this observation suggests that they can also form completely by themselves if nothing is there to disrupt them and if the actual gas is already present and is ready to be merged. In this case, it just had to be the right temperature and of course the right mass. But unfortunately, until further studies or until further discoveries, that's kind of all we know about this cluster and of course about these unusual beasts known as AGNs. Until we discover more, that's all I wanted to mention. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you still haven't. Share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. Maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.